And so a lot of friendly faces I know, some actually I don't know. I'm Dr. Alicia Armitstead and I'm a chiropractor in New York City and I do muscle testing for a living. And this is, of all the workshops I do, this is my absolute favorite workshop. I obviously am passionate about muscle testing and I wanna share it with the world. And so self muscle testing, you really can learn it through practice. Um, it's not like I have a special gift uh, that you guys can't tap into. Anybody really can do this, uh, chiropractor or no chiropractor. Um, no scientific background, that's absolutely fine. Um, it's almost like, you know, we all have our intuition and it's that innate intelligence that we're really actually tapping into. And so using muscle testing, that's the term that I like to use. It's a broad term. Um, it was developed in the 1960s by Dr. G George Goodhart. He was a chiropractor who almost like stumbled upon it as he was working on the body. And so that's where the actual muscle testing comes from. And he discovered it by pressing on patients' arms and then finding different reflexes in the body. And so I was, gosh... I was 16 and I had asthma and when I was 12 and going through the emergency rooms, nebulizer treatments, uh, really having the severe asthma, sick and tired of the emergency room visits. I went to a chiropractor who did that type of muscle testing. And um, you know, going through the program, I haven't had asthma since. In graduating high school, I stopped all inhalers. Um, I've never had to touch prednisone again in my life. Um, and I was just one of those lucky people that uh, knew what I wanted to do at 18. I was like, this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna become a chiropractor and heal the world like uh, he healed me. And so ever since then, using the muscle testing, it's like my big vision in the world is, you know, you go to a dinner party and it's like, oh, who's your doctor? No, I want people to turn to each other and be like, oh, who's your muscle tester? And um, that's why I just want people to know it's even an option. I feel like the muscle testing I do in New York City, I'm like in my own little bubble. People don't even know it exists and I've been doing it for 15 years. And so part of just doing these workshops and getting people to have a taste for it or like, oh yeah, I've heard about that is just to get the word out like this. And so with the muscle testing and how it all works is we're, when I muscle test in the office, I think of it as picking up on the body's biofeedback. And uh, we can use any muscle in the body. It's just easiest for me to push on somebody's arm. And if this arm doesn't work, I'll use the other arm or I can use any other different muscle. And so as I push on a patient's arm, then I press on different organs. Here we have the thyroid, here's the immune system, the pituitary, and lungs are here, and as I go down the body to the different organs. And as I put pressure on the body, let's say there is something going on here with my thyroid. The body doesn't like the pressure, sends a signal up to the brain, wants to protect the thyroid, that if I press here and I press on the patient's arm, it's like I'm pressing both to like, purposely neurologically upset the body to give me feedback. If there's something wrong here, then the body, the arm goes weak just a little bit. And if the thyroid is nice and healthy, then the arm stays strong. And that lets me know all organs that go weak and all organs that go strong in the body. And so in self muscle testing, you're not going to quite get that feedback. But what we can do is figure out different things that either resonate with the body or don't resonate. So it's very black and white. It's a very yes or no answer in that aspect. And that's kind of what I do in the office too. If the thyroid goes weak, the question is, okay, what can I do to help it? And we use different homeopathic test files. I just have one here. Uh, if you guys have been to my office, I have like kits all like lined up of all these different glass vials. And so they contain traces of different toxins. We look for heavy metals, heavy chemicals, food intolerances, and then any type of bacteria, parasites. If the, there is, uh, this one is mercury. If there is mercury in the thyroid, I put it here and I press and the arm goes strong because we were pretending that the thyroid was weak. Now, if it goes strong, that change in the muscle testing is because this is actually resonating with what's going on in the thyroid. I literally picture like everything in the world has energy. 
um, I go back to E equals MC squared, uh, Einstein's uh, famous qu uh, quote formula. E equals MC squared, energy equals mass times the speed of light squared. So anything with mass has energy. And I literally think of each one of these different vials as having a different signature wavelength that the body instantly picks up on. And it goes through the autonomic nervous system, which is weird because we're so used to our arm being voluntary, but no, this is the involuntary nervous system. The body instantly knows that wavelength it hits and the body has a reaction or doesn't have a reaction, it's instant. And so if this wavelength matches a wavelength in here, then that actually, that matching takes the stress off of the body. So that's how I'm picturing it in the office, okay? And then the question is, okay, if there's mercury in the thyroid, let's pretend that some supplements might be able to help. And so I just grabbed a few out of my closet downstairs. Uh, we have homeopathy. Uh, this is standard process. Um, if you guys don't know standard process, I love it. It's an organic farm. And it, I love it because it's food. The body knows how to heal with food. And that's really what I try to get to do. Um, not just with supplements, but like, okay, let's actually change what you're eating. And so if this could help the body, I lay it on the body. And it doesn't have to be the thyroid, but I'm doing it so you guys could actually see. But it could be anywhere on the body because the body can pick up on it. So I put it on the body. I push on the arm. And let's pretend the arm stays weak. So the body doesn't actually care for this. The body's saying, no, it didn't change what's going on in the thyroid. So then this is homeopathy, lay it on the body, arm goes strong, then I know, okay, this is what I need to help the body, okay? So I wanted you guys to see what we do on a professional level or how we you know, work with the body and the, all the different organs. So self-muscle testing, and um, there's different ways to do muscle testing, there's different techniques. There's always a new technique going on. So in the office with that muscle testing that I said about the organs is called nutrition response testing. Um, I put that out there because a lot of my patients don't even hear those words out of my mouth because I just constantly keep calling it muscle testing. Uh, but the actual technique is called a, a nutrition response testing. As a chiropractor, if I'm gonna work on you chiropractically, we muscle test the actual vertebra and the joints, and that's called applied kinesiology. And there's lots of different muscle testing techniques out there. And when we actually use words to muscle test, and so I just showed you like how we actually use objects and uh, vials and actual remedies. If we use words to muscle test, and I, that kind of takes it to this whole other level, but I literally think again as a sound wave. When the word is said, it's an actual sound wave that hits the ears and the body responds or doesn't respond. And so we're going to be using some of that in our self-muscle testing as well. And when we use words to self-muscle test, the arm is strong, it's a yes, and the arm is weak, it's a no. And there's a technique called Psych-K that allows me to tap into the subconscious beliefs to help patients. And I started, I got certified in this about six years ago when after, you know, nine years of doing all this nutrition and chiropractic, people weren't just getting the results I expected. I'm like, they're doing everything I say, you know, and, you know, I've helped so many people this way and somehow they're not getting the help that they need. And so I was like, there's got to be some subconscious belief. And we know we're holding weird beliefs or beliefs that are holding us back because when we see our own self-sabotage, when we know we need to get to bed early and we still are watching reruns of whatever, or, you know, I, I'm trying to, you know, eat healthier and here I am eating my McDonald's or whatever weird habits we have where we know that we're driven by some subconscious beliefs. So that's why I fell in love with Psych-K and uh, really learned how to use words with the muscle testing as well. When we actually self-muscle test, there's different ways to do it, but using our hands in different ways. I have mastered the technique where you do your thumb and your forefinger together, and then your thumb and your forefinger together on the other hand. And I am right-handed. And so these two muscles are the muscles I'll actually be testing. And so it literally this finger and this finger, you're gonna press it together, 
And you're not going to press so tight that no matter what I do, it doesn't come undone. And you're not going to press it so loose that like whatever I do, it comes, you know, it uh, stops touching. Okay. And so somewhere in the middle, not too hard, not too soft. I feel like Goldilocks, <laughs> but somewhere in the middle there. And so then I'm right-handed and this is called the O-ring uh, in self-muscle testing. And this stays together, this right side stays together. And I pull or push through, okay? So then this is what strong would look like. It stays together. And then if something was a no for my body, it would, it would go through. This would be the, the no, you know, because these muscles get weaker, so then it allows me to go through. Okay, that's what it looks like. And uh, there's a few different ways to do it, uh, self muscle testing, but this is the one that I've mastered. And so it's easy for me to show you guys. And believe it or not, you think that self muscle testing would come really easy to me because I push on arms all day long, but it didn't. And it partly is because with the muscle testing, it was like I was out of the equation. It was easy for me to do other patients because I wasn't like emotionally involved. And part of my job when I muscle test patients is to like almost not think of anything, you know, like as I'm talking to them and they walk in the room, I'm like, oh, maybe it's adrenals or maybe we need to do more exercise or maybe they need to drink more water, you know, like I'm running all these different things in my head to try to help them. But when they lay on the table and we first engage in the muscle testing, it's like, I got to go in that like zone of almost neutrality, like where we try, you know, if we, if you've ever tried to meditate, like where there's just that nothingness to really blank slate to so that when I press on that arm to try to figure it out that I'm not projecting because if I think it's the adrenals I'm going to find the adrenals like that's how powerful our minds are and so we have to be careful that we don't do that so with muscle testing it's like try as you might to be as neutral as possible and then that's why it took me so long to really self muscle test because I couldn't get myself out of my own way. Where if I was pressing on somebody, it created enough space to get the right answers. And so when we do this, this is strong and this is weak. If you guys, are the ones that arrived late, uh, if you remember, get a piece of fruit and then a piece of sugar. Um, or a sugar packet or something extra too sweet in your house that has some sugar in it. Okay. And so the first thing we want to do before we grab something, a strawberry, like let's say I really want to have this strawberry, it's going to be yes, no matter what, because I just want it. So that's what we have to be careful about with self muscle testing. And so the first thing we need to do is actually make sure that we're kind of in that reliable state. So we're literally picking up on the intuition, the innate intelligence of the body. So the first thing we have to do is get a yes. And we use words to help test. So you literally would say yes out loud, yes. And I say out loud, and that's why you guys are all on mute, uh, because the, it's easier. You create space when you say it out loud. Yes and no. Yes and no. So just try that now. Try to get a feel for it. Yes. And maybe do a few yeses. Like, okay, this is really is what strong is. And then do no. 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 Yes. No. Okay. And are you, do you really have to actually say it out loud? So the secret is no, you don't have to say it out loud. Um, you can also just think it, um, but you have to be really focused. You can't say yes and be thinking about what you're having for lunch at the same time. Like those are two different thoughts going on. The idea is thoughts are a different wavelength, a different form. That's why we have to be careful of our thoughts. You know, you can pick up on people's thoughts. You know, have you ever been like, oh, you're a mind reader. I was just thinking that. Like that stuff to me is real. That's not like random. Um, you know, when somebody walks into the room and you just don't get a good vibe. I mean, to me, vibe is another word for energy or wavelengths. So we have, we have yes and we have no, okay? I don't know if you guys have it or not, but I was trying to talk so you guys could keep trying. Yes and no. And now for, if you feel it, when you say it out loud, now I want you to try it. Yes. Well, don't say it out loud. So there's my yes and there's my no. 
try it without actually saying it out loud. Just again, another way to kind of test. Now, if for whatever reason, like you're like, mm, I'm not quite sure, if another way to really see if your testing is accurate before you even start asking what you really want is my name is Alicia Strong. My name is Samantha Weak. Because obviously the yes is Alicia and the no is Samantha, right? So it's like, okay, I just want to make sure I definitely have, my yes is really strong and my no is really weak. And I do this before I start testing anything. I just don't go straight into my testing. I want to make sure that my yes is a strong and my weak is a no. Because I will tell you, if, not just me, but anybody, if I'm too hungry, if I'm too tired, if I'm too hangry, <laughs> if I haven't had enough water to drink, or you guys haven't had enough water to drink, your neurological system will be off, that your yes will be strong and your no will be weak, okay? In medical terms, uh, in my office, we call this switching. Like literally, the brain and the body just aren't communicating well, so your testing is not going to be reliable. So in that moment, you just, you can't self-muscle test, you know, go drink some water, go take a nap, you know, take care of yourself. But um, that's one reason why you, you got to, you know, make sure that before you start te muscle testing, self-muscle testing anything, that your yes is strong and your weak is no is weak. Um, also, if you're too emotionally upset, he's like, oh no, oh, something happened, you know, should I move to Miami? You know, like, that's not the time to do that. <laughs> Um, and so you can, I just said, can you move to Miami? Like, like literally, um, you know, I had you guys bring fruit and sugar, uh, to show how you can self muscle test food. Cause I feel like it's easiest when it's tangible, but when you start using words, you can really self muscle test anything. Uh, but you have to be careful with your words because if you phrase it differently, different times, it can get different results because words are vibration. So be careful that way too. So hopefully you guys all have uh, your sugar. And so I have chocolate chips here. They're Enjoy, um, which is cane, organic cane sugar. Uh, so I was having trouble finding actual sugar in my house. And so literally I can take the whole container or I can just take one, really. It doesn't matter. The quantity doesn't matter. And put it in my hand. So it's in my hand right here. So it's on, it can be anywhere in my body. It's just easier sometimes when you're holding stuff. And I have my finger and my thumb together and I press and there's nothing to say or do. And my, my body's like, no, <laughs> I can't have this. And so sometimes you guys can have cane sugar, you know, but I know that I can't, my body doesn't like it. Okay. So then the idea was not, maybe not all of you guys can have actual fruit. You know, but I was like thinking like, just to make it easy, take the fruit and see if you can have it. And I can't, okay. Uh, what I did bring was a third one. You know, guys, you keep testing as I'm talking. Just try to find, figure, feel it yourself. Is uh, coconut sugar. So, oh, it's backwards for you guys, but organic cake, coconut sugar. And I literally can just take the whole bag and I can try to muscle test and it is strong or I can just dip my fingers in and literally just a few grains and, and nice and strong. And so it's not about qual, qual, uh, how much, it's just like literally very black and white, can I have this or can't I have this? Um, and sometimes, you know, I go through all these different foods in the office, but sometimes, you know, it's like the randomest like things like um, radishes, you know, can bother somebody and sometimes cauliflower can bother people. So it's sometimes like if it's like, oh, I'm not quite sure the salad didn't, you know, sit with me well yesterday. What's in it that really bothers me? And you really can go through each food. I mean, this is if you really want to know what you can eat in the moment. Um, this is the way to do it. Because sometimes it's like I say yes to oatmeal, but then that third day of having oatmeal, you don't feel good. You know, listen to the body. I mean, that's what this is all about. And maybe it's, it is because it's the third day and the body's like, no, I've had enough. I don't need any more. Um, and so that's what's so nice about muscle testing in the moment. Um, you can also muscle test. Um, it, my daughter gave me this idea, like different healthcare products. And I have no problems after years going into the store and start just taking stuff off of the shelf. 
and just like grabbing it and sitting there and muscle testing yes or no. Um, I want it. I want a new toothpaste. I'm like, I want it, you know, I don't know which one do I get? I want a new hair conditioner. I want a new whatever. But she, she gave me the idea because we were in Sephora. It's like her new thing at 12. Um, I, I walk into the store and I just feel so toxic. I'm like, ah, what do we have to get here? Um, and so she, you know, this is her life. She doesn't know any better. You know, she's like, well, which mascara? And she puts it up her arm and we just start muscle testing. Like, that's what I want to see, like for the, the whole world. I mean, that's why I built the wellness center. If you guys haven't been to the new office, you have to see it. We have a whole retail section. My front desk knows how to muscle test you guys for what you need. We have a whole tea bar that you're not allowed to have a tea unless you get muscle tested for because each one of the teas are actually in a different tester and we'll find what two, three teas actually make your own personal blend right there. Like that's how passionate I am. I want everybody to be muscle tested for everything. And if you are a current patient of mine and I haven't muscle tested you like on your skincare or hair care products, definitely bring in a few, you know, I could do five or six in an appointment uh, and we can rotate and figure out like, okay, are you really using the right conditioner, the right uh, makeup? Um, and sometimes if uh, personal care products do show up in the muscle testing, I will tell somebody, you know, like, okay, we got to check your makeup. Um, and so don't, you know, I, I have no issues playing around in public and muscle testing what it, product I want to use. Um, so it could be products, skincare, and I don't mind the grocery store either. It's just the grocery store is a little harder because depending on how big the products are, then you can always go home and muscle test it uh, as well. Hold on one second. We have a question. Could you muscle test something just by thinking of it? Um, and so, yes. And like when I said, like worth like literally just thinking no goes weak and thinking yes goes strong. Um, so if you're sitting there and you're kind of embarrassed about muscle testing in public or it's like too big of a oatmeal container or something, you could just, you know, stand there and look at it and think, you know, uh, would this oatmeal be for my highest good? I like the word highest good just because I don't know. Is this oatmeal healthy for me? Is this oatmeal is good for me? I, good, I guess, is just so, like, uh, could mean so many different things. And so, um, what we're going, uh, yes. And you could use words uh, if the thing isn't in front of you. And like I said, you could you could say like, is it for my highest good to move to Miami? Okay, it is not. <laughs> Just in case any of you guys were wondering. It's not for my highest good to move to Miami. But like, and that's, that's a huge life altering, you know, question. Um, but I kind of went to that extreme just to show you guys what it could be used for. And when I'm talking about the innate intelligence and that intuition, I want you guys to channel into that every single day of your lives, whether you're muscle testing it or not. Um, you know, should I do intermittent fasting in general? What hours should I do? Uh, should I exercise three times this week, four times this week? Like there's so like, they, like you know, in my world, that's just like, oh, let's just start using it for all our healthcare choices. Um, but it could go towards lots of different things. Um, you know, somebody asks you, you know, a friend to get together and you're not quite sure, you know, I wouldn't muscle test right in front of them. Like, oh, hold on a second. Let me see. <laughs> but, you know, there, it could be used for so many reasons. Um, and so if you are having trouble getting your mind out of it, the tip I get, or the tip I give uh, people is just really close your eyes. That way there's no neurological, Im uh, neurological input from the eyes into the brain. Like, so you're kind of shutting the world out. And then I take three deep breaths to try to calm the nervous system down. And then I really just like try not to think of anything and then just use words. And then it is, it is easier when you're first starting out to say the words out loud or to hold it. So that's my tip. If you feel like you're getting, you having a hard time getting yourself out of it, close your eyes, 
three deep breaths. If you meditate, maybe do some muscle testing after meditation because uh, uh, would help too because you just spent that time meditating to actually trying to calm down your mind. Um, and so do you put the sugar in the left hand? I put the sugar or whatever I'm testing in the left hand and my dominant hand is the one doing the actual testing. This is just staying like this. Um, and so could I put it here? Yes, I could, but it's just easier because this one is staying. This one is the one that's moving. So then I'm not, uh, so then I'm not holding anything with this hand. Um, I do, I, I don't have a sugar packet, but I have a dog bone. Well, maybe, <laughs> okay, I laugh just because I'm like, maybe nutritionally you need that dog bone. If you get a yes with that dog bone, you know, maybe think about upping your calcium or something. Uh, it'd actually just be interesting to know whether or not you tested for that dog bone, Colleen. Um, so, you know, that's what kind of makes it hard because of course you would think that your body wouldn't want the dog bone, uh, but maybe it actually does. Um, I picked white refined sugar. Uh, maybe some of you guys actually tested yes to sugar and then therefore this was a little confusing, but I picked white refined sugar just because um, most uh, bodies, most of my patients uh, can't handle it. White refined sugar in general um, is just, uh, it's been so highly processed. Uh, it used to be from the actual cane plant, cane sugar, um, and then they took it and they modified it. And it actually is a very light tan color, and then they bleach it to make it white. So I think part of that whole bleaching process is the reason why people's bodies are like, I don't know what this is. And... Um, Colleen did not test for the bone, just FYI, everybody. <laughs> and um, okay, and then Rita says, putting it, the item in the other hand really did make a difference. Okay, good. And now these days, cane fields and actual cane, the crop of it is um, not as easy. So they have genetically modified our sugar to come from beets, like literally the beets that we eat. And then they don't even tell us because they can just label it on, you know, sugar on the packets and that's it. Um, so just know that a lot of what we're eating is genetically modified um, and it's very frustrating. Um, the non-GMO butterfly label is a real thing that I look for um, on my food as much as possible because if it doesn't have that, then you just have to assume what you're eating is genetically modified. When they genetically modify it, I know scientists uh, are being, um, are trying to do the best they can. Maybe they just don't know, but our bodies recognize it or they don't recognize it. They're like, this is genetically modified. What is this? Um, and so that's why sugar tends to go weak for a lot of people. And then even when it's like, okay, you can have sugar, it is again, always in moderation. And so that's the difference between um, cane sugar or organic cane sugar and uh, just regular sugar. Um, just know that regular sugar is now genetically modified and coming from beets. And so the cane sugar is something that sometimes people can you know, consume again in moderation uh, because their bodies are like, okay, at least I know what this is. And um, finger strength differ each time, not quite getting it. Does it take time? Yes, this takes time. I can't necessarily teach this in a half hour. Um, so practice, definitely practice. And it sometimes, um, and it is like just yes, no, yes, no, yes, yeah, no, I'm not quite sure. It is a matter of keeping these two fingers the same every time, not too tight, not too loose, but somewhere in the middle. And this doesn't, uh, doesn't really change or move. And it's this that is actually doing the pushing to see if something is strong or weak. Um, if you leave this and you're like, I got this, not at all. I would say keep trying every day, just a little bit. Mm, I'm not quite sure, probably for two weeks. At the end of the two weeks, um, see whether or not you have it. But you know, trying it three times uh, doesn't count. You really do, do want to try it. Um, I feel the muscle in my test hand palm, is that a factor? Um, I mean, if any of this is painful or arthritic, um, 
it might not be a good way of muscle testing um, just because it's a neurological test. And so then if there's any pain, then something's off. Um, so it could be a factor. If you feel like it's, if you are so weak that you can't like get these two together and with a little resistance, keep it together, then this isn't the right self muscle testing to do. But even if it's like, okay, I'm kind of weak. I don't feel like, you know, I'm just having a weak day. You should be able to put these two fingers together with a little bit of resistance. Does that make sense? Um, my practitioner gave me good advice to test a hundred random things a day, uh, outside, inside, or, or, or just saying I'm in my room. Yes. I'm outside. No. Yeah. So you can help strengthen your muscle testing. That's why I was like, it's good if you really say, you know, my name is Alicia strong. My name is Sam. So you really have a definite yes and a definite no. And if you can do different things that are yes and no like that, a hundred things a day randomly, that would be a good way to do it. And if they're really random and there's no emotional connection, that's an easy way to start because then you're not, you know, I have absolutely no emotional reaction to, you know, my name is Sam. It's like instantly the body, you know, says no. Um, that's a good way to do it. Um, any other questions? Uh, go ahead and write them in your chat. This was really good to do, guys. I wish I should have brought you guys, told you guys to bring a hundred different things. <laughs> and so <laughs> we're going to just go into the kitchen and just start muscle testing everything. <laughs> um, no, that's a really good way of doing it. That's why I was like, just can do it consistently. Try a few things uh, for two weeks. Uh, definitely don't give it up. If you're ambidextrous, does it make uh, sense which hand you use? No. But if you're starting out, I would just pick one hand. So this will always be the holding hand and this will be always the put pulling hand. I would keep it the same uh, for a while. Um, well, and then if the, for whatever reason this doesn't feel good, then obviously try the other side. Um, but I would purposely keep it the same and not keep going back and forth until you feel like you definitely got a yes and a no. Um, how can you ask about a physical condition? So I wouldn't ask about a physical condition until you got more advanced. And that's just part of the emotional aspect to it. Um, I'm going to go extreme and it's like, you know, I sneeze, <laughs> you know, oh my God, do I have COVID? You know, don't go there unless like, because there's just so much emotional baggage with that. Right. Um, and it's like, you're, you're muscle testing out of fear. You know, you know that it's like you're, you're scared. So you go to muscle testing. So again, it's like, that's not the time to necessarily do it. Um, you're going to get, you may or may not get the right answer, but do you know what I mean? Like um, you really want to be in a place where you're not upset um, and you're not fear-based trying to find uh, answers. I mean, and that's when you go, you know, to a professional. Um, and so I know you, um, Yes, I can talk to somebody about uh, Spain. Yes, example, consistent headache. Yeah, headaches are a good example of like, you know, is the tomato sauce I just ate triggering my headache? Yes or no, even if the tomato sauce isn't there. Um, that's a good way of physically trying to figure out what just triggered, you know, my pain. Um, could you muscle test your baby if pregnant? Yes. Um, again, there's no actual reflex or, or something specifically to hold. You would be using words as well. Is this soap good for the baby? Yes or no? Um, is, you know, I, you can ask that specifically versus is this soap good for me? You just make sure the word baby, or you could say, is this soap good for me and the baby? I guess, right? Because why would you want to signal yourself out of that equation? Um, Uh, yes. Okay. So if I'm like wondering if I'm allergic to my cat and I uh, hold my cat, like they're on their lap. That's another thing. You don't have to actually be holding this stuff. It could just be on your actual lap. If you have the cat on your lap and you muscle test you, and you're actually allergic, I, your, your fingers should go weak. Your body is saying no one way or the other. Um, is it a true allergy? I don't know. 
um, you'd have to actually go to an allergist to figure that out. But I think of it as a sensitivity. Am I allergic to cane sugar? No, but my body's just like saying, no, thank you. Does that make sense? Um, okay, so I actually, let's see. Yeah, okay, that makes sense. Good. If you have any other questions, if you think of something, guys, later, uh, you feel free to email me at info at healingartsnyc.com. A lot of you guys got an email from me for this link anyways, because uh, you guys might think of something else. And I just actually love these questions, um, and it helps me figure out how to talk to patients about the self-muscle testing. So 100 things, guys. So get to work. Uh, thanks for meeting me on this Saturday afternoon, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.